That's what I would be asking. How, how, do, how does a guy get to think different? You're, making, you're, make, you're working for yourself and you're making 30 or 40 or 50,000 a year or 100 grand or 200 grand. You're like, I work for myself. But dude, when, when think bigger. What would be those actionable steps? I mean, I know we talked about looking so, at the Project Deg show. Today, we are literally in Miami sitting next to a gentleman who does not need any introduction, somebody who has personally changed my life in ways that you may never even know. Grant Cardone, thank you yeah, so, thank so you, much. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for, for coming down and doing this, man, and being willing to help people. Absolutely. Let's jump right in. Okay. What is your story? Oh, my story? Dude, my story is, you know, like everybody else's story. Like, you know, it's, uh, you know I, I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, and um, my dad died when I was 10, and he was a hardworking guy. My, mom took over. She, she now had the role of two people. And we, there was five kids. Uh, we, we lived in a little brick house on, on 10th Street. I think it was, uh, I forget the address now, but it's on 10th Street. That was a big house for my, my parents. And then um, there was seven of us that lived in that house. And it was maybe 1,400 square feet. We were middle class. It was a middle class household. No, there was no, nothing terrible going on in my house. I had a tetherball in the backyard. and. Uh, you know, a, a tree house, man, that I was excited about when I was seven years old. Uh, and my, my parents were hardworking people. Like, so, so when my dad died, the income stopped. My dad had, had uh, just before he died, bought a, um, the I Made It Home on the lake in Lake Charles. If you know Lake Charles, right, you've been mm -hmm. through there. So, um, when he died, dude, my mom had to, like, she had to sell the house. Like, it, 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 there was terror in the household. You could feel, I was only 10, but I could feel this, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. well, you know, like, we can't handle all this. I can't manage this. I can't. We're too far out in the country now. And so she sold the house. We moved back into the little town, what we called the city, <laughs> late Charles. <laughs> and this is 30 years ago, right? So uh, I lived across the street from Oak Park Elementary, uh, elementary or high school. Uh, no, elementary. And I walked across 50, 50 yards every day to go to school and hated the 50 yard walk. Had to look at the prison every day. So that's how I grew up, man. And I lived in Lake Charles till I was 29. And, and I, was a, I was a kid that wanted to do, I wanted to do more. I wanted to be more like my dad. And maybe because I lost him early, I wanted to be the guy in control. I wanted to be the guy that ran the household. I wanted to be the guy, the go-to guy, the, that, that the family looked up to. Everybody in my family looked up to this one guy because he, he was the one that knew what to do, where to go, how to pay for it, how to get the money necessary to pay for it. You know, it, 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 traditional, every, just, I'm, I'm, I'm describing probably half of America right now. The other half, the other half of America, or maybe 45% is, had, had us the worst situation than I had. And then there's four or 5% that, you know, they're just, they grow up, they have no, no, everything's an illusion because every, they got it made, apparently made, until they don't. That's my story, man. What did your childhood smell like? What did it smell like? It smelled like pine needles, man, and, and, and uh, pine needles and uh, uh, fresh grass because I was cutting the grass all the time. What was your relationship like with your father before he passed? I was 10, so th th there was not a lot of interaction. I just, I remember watching him. I, I remember watching him go to work and then come home. Like there was a, he was a presence. You know, he, you could, he had a threat to him. So in, anybody that, that grew up in a disciplinary environment, my dad didn't have to whip you. He, he whipped you one time and then you're, you're like, okay, I, I'm not getting another one of those. So everything else after that was a threat. It was not the, the it, it was not contact. It wasn't necessary, right? So um, he'd come home at night, dude. He'd come home at night, six o'clock, and he'd kick up in the in the lazy boy, watch some TV, and then he'd crash. So and he was also having health problems. The ten years that 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 I experienced my dad between he was forty two to fifty two, he was starting to have some some issues with his heart. heart so. Um, that there was, you could feel that they, they were worried about him doing too much because of these heart attacks that would come on once a year. What about the relationship between your mother and father? What was it? It was good. Like yeah, you? it was good. It was a good relationship. But he was in charge. 
And how about with your mother? What is it, how, oh, how mama, with, between me and mama, mm -hmm. oh, we were like best friends. Like, you know, she was like, uh, you know, again, she, she lived till she was, let's see, Sabrina's nine. So nine years ago, she passed. I mean, I guess I was 51. Yeah, so uh, she passed right about the time that I had my first kid. My, my mom and I were like, she was the person I would call every time I had a victory. Every time something happened, I'd call her up. Hey, mom, didn't matter where I was in the world. She was always the first person I would call. Say, look, I did this today. I did this. Oh, my God, check this out. How did the, the, the dynamic between you and your siblings evolve over time? Uh, twin brother. I have a twin brother. had an older brother that was five years older than me. He died when I was 20. He was 25. Uh, two sisters, everybody's five years apart, so there wasn't a lot of influence because of the, 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 the five years, you know. So um, the older sister, when I was 10, she was 25. Then there's a 20-year-old, 15-year-old, 15-year-old. He, he has no interest in a 10-year-old, you know. Because of the five years, there's just zero interest. Now, me, my twin brother and I were, like, inseparable. You know, so so everywhere from the womb to 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 adolescence, to trading girlfriends, to switching on them, not them not knowing, to to him he's going to my PE class and I'm going to his home study class. You know, so so Grant, you know, I know you probably do a ton of interviews. I mean, yeah. you're in, the, in front of the media all the time. Like, from from somebody in my position, right? What questions should I be asking you? Like, wh what do I need to know? Yeah, you, you, you should, first of all, you know, the upbringing thing's great and everything, but it doesn't matter, because it's over. Like, like everybody's got to get over their upbringing, whatever it was. Everybody wants to start with how'd you, how'd you raise? Look, look, there's so many people who have it worse than me, had it worse than me. I had it good, actually. You know, so I, compared to other kids, I had it like a thousand times better and screwed it up. I went backwards. Most kids have to grow. They got to they got to grow up out of nothing. And in many ways, when you have when you have a comfortable life, and then you you screw it all up, and you got to start over. You at least had a taste. You know, these kids coming out of inner city Baltimore, they, 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 the only taste they have is watching somebody on Instagram. Like, it's so unattainable. There's no, there's no math to get out, you know? Like, uh, you know, uh, Park, Park Place in New York. There's one side of Park Place in New York where it's the wealthiest people in the world, not, not in the country, in the world. I mean, it is the, the people that run, they run global economies. Mm -hmm. And then you go north uh, into Brooklyn, the, 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 it's a nurse that's making 58 grand a year in New York City. She can't. She can't. She can barely afford the subway. She's got a kid. Her da her husband left her, or maybe they were never married. Like, there's so many people that have it so much harder. Like, they they, they they're never gonna wear a tie and a jacket, and ha they they don't even know about this move right here on the hanky. So you know, they're 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 shopping at the dollar store. The kids, they, they, you know, it, dude, it's how are you gonna get from where you are? to where you want to be. That's the deal. You know, I'm waking up this morning in Miami and I'm, re I'm realizing, damn, my, my, man, I've been thinking so small my whole life. Like, the whole time I've been thinking small. Even today, like this week, I'm like, what, what was I thinking this whole time? So I think everybody is conditioned by their upbringing. So the thing you should be asking is, dude, how do I think bigger, right? How do I think bigger? How do I start living up to my full potential? Mm -hmm. And, and wh why, why on a planet where there's, you know, if, if, if there's one example of somebody moving around the planet freely, you know, at will, doing what they want, when they want, how they want, I don't mean an Instagram post. I mean real people, real people that are actually moving around. That, that should be the examples that we're looking at. And, and because there's too few people actually doing that. Like if you, if you look at the number, the, the number of people that are able to go where they want, do what they want. It's so few, it's unbelievable. And why? And then the question is, why is that? You know, why are a handful of people like Elon Musk? Why is he thinking about going to Mars? And me and you are trying to figure out how to get a new watch. 
right? That's my big deal this week. This week I'm buying watches. I swore I, was gonna, I wasn't going to buy any more watches, and, that, and, and, and I feel like I need to go back to rehab or something. Uh, you know, why am I looking at a watch and this dude's thinking about going to a, another planet? That's what I would be asking. How, how, do, how does a guy get to think different? You know, let's say a guy's in, he's a security guy. How, how does a security guy start thinking about not how to get more money? Dude, how does he get more freedom? How does he start getting himself out of the, the deal you're in? Okay, maybe you're doing, maybe you're running a dog, uh, you know, a doggy daycare, a doggy daycare you know, and, and you're making, you're, you're working for yourself and you're making 30 or 40 or 50,000 a year or 100 grand or 200 grand. You're like, I work for myself. But dude, when, when, think bigger, you know? What would be those actionable steps? I mean, I know we talked about looking at the people who truly have the freedom to move around, but like what actionable steps do we need to take to think bigger? Like yeah, how well do you we evaluate you, 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 for You've got to find somebody situation? to emulate, right? So you're emulating that jacket, that tie, that the, everything. Dude, your whole look, dude, it's, it's emulating something. You got those ideas. That dress code came from somebody. So just like mine did, right? Who, who knows who influences C on Cardone Capitalist? Probably the Chicago White Sox. It looks a little like it, right? I mean, it came from somewhere. Somewhere I was influenced by it, right? Now, I don't know how I ended up with the hoodie today. And, but we're being influenced, right? What, what are we being influenced by? You know, who are you listening to? Like, who, who are you studying? What books are you reading? Are they even true? Like, we go to school. We spend 12 years in, in schools, forced, forced schooling by the government. We don't even know if the stuff in the books is true. We just assume that's what that's supposed to be. That's how that works, you know? And, and so people, people should start looking. So I, I'm under the belief that with so many people not doing well, you can't think that that many people don't want to do well. You know, two, two, two thirds of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. There's no way 70% of Americans want to live paycheck to paycheck. So what do they have in common? What they have in common is where they got their data. They're, we're all getting our data from the same factory. So when you look around, you see this many people being held down. It doesn't matter blacks, whites, uh, Native Americans, uh, people in Russia. When that many people are being held down, you know, when there's so much possibility on this planet, you have to start saying, wait a minute, are the people all screwed up? Or, or is the data maybe that we're getting incorrect? For the first uh, 45 years of my life, when I took a trip somewhere, because of, my, because of the way I was trained, dude, I was trained to save money. Like, I was trained like a monkey to save money. Like, it was embedded into my genetic code. I could not pay retail for anything. If I paid retail, I, st I still do it today. Rather than just saying, hey, give the guy the money he wants for that watch. I don't care if he's charging me too much. I'm going to get some more money anyway. I had it embedded. Like, you got to get a good deal. You got to pay a lower price. The, the, the lower the price, the better the value. Like, it's, it's like in my, like, like uh, I think my, it's probably deep in my bone marrow, right? Uh, which, not, not true, it's just the way I think, right? It's, it was pounded into me. And by the media, by my parents, by, by the, my surroundings, by Louisiana. Louisiana is mm -hmm. really big on pay less. Yeah. And even stores called pay less. Pay less, dollar <laughs> store, budget store. Uh, our deals are this weekend, so don't pay retail. Put more air in your tires. It'll save you gas. All these crazy things when you look at them. And, and so when, when, you're, when you're thinking about how to spend less, you don't have your attention on offense. Dude, how do I go get more? Then, then you come to Miami. I mean, you got to be freaking out in Miami. Is it a little bit of a culture shock? It's, it's amazing. Dude, Absolutely. you're like, oh, my God, dude. There's a Rolls. There's a Lambo. I remember I pulled into a hotel here. <clears throat> I went there to have lunch with a guy, and, and there's, I don't know, 15 Rolls Royce. I've never seen that many Rolls Royce in my whole life. I lived in Beverly Hills for uh, 15 years. I had never seen that many Rolls. Pull around the corner, then there's like 18 Ferraris. I'm like, damn, where's all the money? I go to, I go to the restaurant. I walk in. I had to cover my watch. I was ashamed of my watch. Because my little watch, there's 400 grand on his arm, 600,000 on his, a million dollar watch over here. I mean, it was like crazy and, and money from all over the world. So it's like, I, I don't know if I'm answering your question here, but it's almost like you got to lift off all this bad data 
about s scarcity and shortages and just get by and be grateful for the little bit you have and start thinking in terms of abundance and prosperity and and because it's not it's not a it's not a myth i mean these people actually have more than they can actually ever get rid of when when you're talking about kind of breaking through that veil yeah. if you will do you think it's the culmination of all the different influences or do you think there are key obstacles that like you have to break through this one thing and then you can get to that next level i i think it's a stripping of data i, I think everybody's looking to add the right piece of information i think what people should be doing is looking at what information do i need to remove from my input right because my because you're calculating you're, you're calculating every day we're all calculating right and we're coming up with some result and so um you know, they, they send me over to the golf. I'm, I'm over there golfing, and they're like, practice your swing. I'm like, dude, my swing's terrible. All I'm going to do is I'm going to groove in a bad swing and bad habits. That's all I'm doing is grooving in the same data. I need to strip away first. Don't give me another swing. I need to strip away the old swing, right? So in finance and entrepreneurship and, and, and particularly in, in the freedom search, people need to get rid of this slave mentality. And I think, you know, like if you just look around, like where is it coming from? Dude, the banks tell you to save your money. Save it with who? With them. Wall Street says start investing. With who? With them. Uh, you need to start when you're young. Did you hear that? Yeah. The younger you start, even if it's little amounts, who, and who, who, who's telling you that? The guys that want that freaking dough. They yeah. even set up accounts for you. Worry about retirement. How old are you? 24. 24 years old, dude. Do you have a retirement account? I have a savings account. Uh, yeah. Yes. You I got have you got you account. got people that are actually setting up retirement accounts in their mid twenties. The last thing you need to worry about is retiring. Okay. I had an older brother die at twenty five years old. He had a retirement account. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense. What are you doing retiring? What worried about retirement at twenty five when you should be working your ass off, right? Figuring out how to get money, not to save money. Save for a rainy day. All this. A penny saved is. Penny earned. Yeah, that's what your mom told you, right? She, your mom didn't know anything about money. So we get, we get our advice from people that got their advice from people that wanted money. You know, I remember, I remember being in church one day, and, and uh, it was a Baptist church in Houston, Texas, and the guy starts going off about money, right? I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes, man. Here it comes. I'm waiting for the close. And sure enough, man, he's talking about money, root of all evil, da da da. He's pumping it. He's in. I'm all in. I say, watch, watch. Here comes the close. And then, boom, here come the baskets. So it's like, money's terrible. Give it to me. Which, by the way, the church needs money. And, and, and I'd rather give my money to the church than give it to the banks. Because all the banks are going to do is what? If you look at what the bank, go, go to New York and just walk in. I walked into Goldman Sachs in New York. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a mind blow for me, dude. It was the elevators. They got elevators that are half the size of the studio. Like you walk in it, 30 people can fit in one elevator, not touch each other. Like they're massive. Like these are, these are multi, probably $10 million elevators. And they got banks and banks of them, like 12 different elevators for people moving up and down, going out there in the world, collecting money. So that's who we need to think like. Well, what did those guys do to build these monuments? When you think back to somebody like Rockefeller or yeah. Vanderbilt, yeah, yeah. or uh, yeah, those are Benjamin the guys. Franklin. Those are the guys we should be studying, man. Do you do you think like every day, like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow their legacy out of the water. I want to be bigger than them. I want people to remember. Yeah, me dude, I want to be. I want to do something biblical. What do you? I don't want know. That I don't be? know. I, I got to figure out what that is. It, it would have to touch a lot of people, though. You know, that, that would excite me. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's even possible. I mean, first thing I think is that's stupid, dude. You know, you can't do that. But, but, but the guys that did stuff that, that is in books for thousands of years and hundreds of years, this is how they were thinking. They, they weren't thinking for themselves. They wanted to change something, whether it was Columbus or Jesus, you know, probably bad, bad comparisons, but, um, or Gandhi or Mother Teresa. They, want, they didn't want to do something just because I want to be in the history books. They wanted to do something different. I don't know what propelled or compelled them to want to do something different. But I think Johnny wants to do something big. Like, once you get a taste, man, and you're like, so it's like a Dwayne Wade retired this week, right? Dude, he, he, until he figures out what he's going to do to, to discover the next Dwayne Wade, he is going to be miserable. You know, these guys talk about this. Uh, my friend Tim Grover, who's a, he's a, he's a uh, coach to... 
he was a coach to Michael Jordan and Kobe. And he says, look, man, when Kobe won his ring, everybody goes out and they're partying that weekend and they're getting drunk and wasted. And Kobe's like, what's next? What are we going to do next? And you see, in our society today, that's condemned. It's like, dude, just enjoy yourself. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy the ring. And he's like, no, what's next? And he's, the, he's right. What, what we should all be looking for is what can I do next? Do you feel like there's ever a point where you can think too big? Like, like for example, no, you were just... I don't think there's a point where you can think too big. So when you were saying, like, you want to think, I think I think you can think too small. Well, I don't think anybody needs to worry about thinking too big. To the point of being delusional. Like, like the, 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 the issue is, hey, do I go... Am I just being delusional? Look, you need... Your, 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 your thinking needs to be backed by some kind of math. Right. There needs to be some kind of blueprint. Okay, I'm going to do this today. Uh, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Grant Cardone's office. I'm going to drive across the country. We see this all the time. People come drive. I drove, I drove from Alaska. I'm here. I want a job today. I'm not leaving until I take it. Like, like I'm taking my clothes off. And, and, and I'm going to get, I'm standing out here, right? right. I, I'm going to stand out here until Grant Cardone does an interview. Dude, like, great. I appreciate the enthusiasm. That's not going to get you an interview here, right? What's going to get you an interview is to know who's going to do the interview because it's not me. So taking your clothes off ain't going to help you. I appreciate the commitment. Um, and I appreciate driving across the country, but, it, 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 you know, you've got to back delusional with, hey, I'm going to do this. It's going to benefit somebody. Nobody gets hurt. People benefit, right? So, so, you know, if you want to make a difference and you go to the White House, dude, and you jump the gate, you're going to get killed. Like, that's, like, you're not making a difference. You, 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 you want to make a difference for the better, a friend of mine told me once. Make a difference for the better, where everybody benefits. So, uh, when you were saying how you did want to do something biblical. Yeah. And, you know, you wanted to go down in history. See, and pe people that hear that would be like, oh, no, dude, that, that, that's just ridiculous Look, that anybody would want to do. I, I guarantee somebody's going to say, who are you to want to do something biblical? Who are you to not think that you can't do something biblical? Dude? Like, if you guys believe in God, man, who the hell made you? Right? Uh, Jesus said, I am. That's all he said. I mean, that's, that's strong. Who are you? I am. You know? He didn't say, I am uh, 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 a man with one pair of sandals and I walked, uh, 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 you know, six days. It, how long did he walk? Was it six days? How many days was it? No, no, it was longer than that. The, the walk from Nazareth down to... You I'm, I'm Jewish, it? so I can't really help you out much. Well, dude, you should be able to. It was in your land. Okay? Like, like he did walk your land. I'm yeah. going over there, by the way. I can't wait to go see the Israelis. It's amazing. So, see, those are th big thinkers, dude. 31 hours. Mm -hmm. 31 hours, okay? I thought he walked across the whole planet, man. I mean, based on what I was reading in the Bible, I'm like, this guy wrote, man, he must have got, dang, how you do that one pair of sandals? It was only 31 hours. Like, like, you know, I'm going to fly to Singapore. It's going to be 31 hours. Now, it's not on my feet. But the point is, the point is, you know, you know, what can we all do to make a difference in not just our lives? I think everybody's worried about paying for their bag at Whole Foods. And unfortunately, look, 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 at, look, we've just been reduced to like what we worry about. I gotta build my house. I gotta get my little fence. I gotta take care of my little kids. Where, where I grew up, it was the family. Family's the most important thing. Oh, it's a family. Dude, it's only five people. You, you, nobody should be reduced to like thinking only about people with your last name. If you look at the, 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 the Israeli people, right? Like, here's 11 million people, 13 million, maybe 15 million people on the whole planet. Like, when I was told there was only 15 million Jews on planet Earth, I was like, that is impossible. And, the, and then the people are like, no, maybe not even that many. The amount of power one group of people, because why? They're, they're interested in their survival. So they stick together. They don't sue each other. Is that right? Time to time. So yeah, but, but you can get mostly kicked. Not, you, yeah. Mostly, like, that's frowned on. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't do that. We're not going to take each other down. We're going to support one another. And that's what people should be doing, dude. How, how, can, how can we get better? If you look at the Asians, uh, the, the Chinese people that come to America, it is the single group of people with the most money in the bank, 
the most equity in the homes and the most income. Smallest, small, tiny group of people in America, yet they come here and they think different about money. They think they like math. Their, their parents teach them to embrace math. And their, teacher, uh, their, their parents teach them that money is important. In America, you're taught money is not important. And they were taught that this is the country where, where the land of the, the, the brave, what is it, land of the brave, home of the free, home mm -hmm. of the free and land of the brave. Dude, ain't no, ain't no brave people around here, man. The guy that drove down here from Alaska and starts threatening everybody around here, he ain't brave, he's crazy. You know, to, to be brave, you have to be sane. You have to be making, to be brave, you have to say, okay, I'm in harm's way right now, but I'm going to do this anyway. So... One of the things that I've always been really inspired by is your ability to connect with other people, right? Like, I mean, it, it, it's almost like people are willing to literally lay their life on the line for, for you. And, and, you know, they watch you all the time. And it's yeah, like yeah. you're almost building like a cult following, which is incredible. Yeah. What is your philosophy on developing that deep, meaningful, and genuine human connection? You know, I just, you know, you don't do that because you're, you have some message. You do, you know, the way I've done it is that, that I, I, I communicate with people every day. So um, I got a lot going on most every day. I still make the time to do this. So the, the fact that I am willing to today do it, tonight do it, tomorrow do it, again do it, no matter what, where I am, you know, I think it builds a lot of trust. People are like, hey, I know that dude. I know him. I see the back of his life, I, or, or inside of his life. I see his marriage. I see his kids. I see what he's doing. Uh, a lot, most people that actually that, that meet us here, uh, it's online, YouTube, or Twitter, or wherever, they don't like me really in the first. Eh, I don't think I like that guy at first, you know. And then they're like, I pop, pop up again, I pop up again, pop up again. They're like, you know what, dude, you know, I didn't like him at first. How many times do we hear that around here? A lot. You know, so, so, um, you know. You, you can tell people that you have a genuine interest in helping them, and a lot of people do say that. But I, I'm just, I believe that you, you are your actions, and the marketplace will see that, hey, look, uh, I, like I've been buying real estate for 30 years. I've never lost a deal, never been bankrupt. I don't, I don't sue other people. That is who I am. What you do is who you are. Don't tell me, don't tell me what you believe in. T show me what you've done. So... I, I don't know how we've created this thing, except that I'm a noisy guy, and, and I show up every day. And I only tell people to do what I'm doing or I know something about, so it might come off as genuine because I'm not making stuff up. I'm not telling people how to build a big company. I'm, I'm building a company, and I'm, I'm going to build a big company one day. And, and <laughs> as I do that, I'm, tell, I'm telling people, this is what we're doing. What's your greatest theory? I don't know, greatest theory, show up, man. My, that's my theory. My theory, my practical theory is show up, just like you did today. So Show up, and then when you show up, show up again. Make sure you're there. So, Grant, what's something that is an important part of who you are that... To help, man. To help is the, the important thing for me. Well, an important part of who you are that people don't know about oh. you. Well, maybe they don't know that. I don't know. This guy's kind of introspective, isn't he? Um, dude, I want to help people. Like, I'm not doing this because there's money involved. So a lot of people are like, oh, that, that's the money, dude. Yeah, I like money. I got to tell you, I like large sums of money. The bigger it is, the more excited I get about it. Okay, when it gets really, really big, I get really, really excited. And anybody that doesn't, you know, maybe as we end off here, Anybody that doesn't get excited about money, you quit on it. That's all you did. You quit on it. Because if I throw $400 million down in front of your face right now, and I say, oh, dude, I don't care who you are. $400 million stacked. $1 million. I get down to $1 million, Okay? I put down $40,000 there. I'm, I'm going down in numbers right now pretty, pretty drastically. I give you 1% of some of that. You'd be like, dang, I'm excited. But the bigger the money gets, the, the more excited people get. What, what do I got to do to get that? You know, All of a sudden, people are like, what do I got to do? It's not about the paper, man. It's about what could I do with that? What could I do with that score, right? So, so yeah, I talk about all those things. I talk about success. But I just want to help people, man. 
and, 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 and people need, you know, I know the first 12 years didn't help you. The next five aren't going to help you either. College didn't do it. You got people bailing out of Harvard, Yale, and MIT, so you know MacNeese can't do much. <laughs> I mean, come on. So if you're lucky enough in your college to get one teacher that takes interest in you, by the way, they will have to take interest in you. Mm -hmm. They will have to take interest. They'll be like, hey, dude, outside the class, let me do something. Then you got to be suspect of that teacher right there because he wants to spend t alone time with you. Uh, but if somebody was lucky enough to get that kind of guidance, then maybe they'd get something out of college. But for the most part, dude, the help you're going to get, the real help is going to be somebody outside of your ecosystem, you know, that you got to tap into. Like I've tapped into a lot of guys over the years. So... One last question for you, and, uh, and I really do appreciate the time that we've yeah, been able to share it. together. It's truly been an honor and, and yeah, a pleasure thank to you, speak man. with my, you. My, my privilege. Um, I'm 24, like I was yeah, saying. Yeah. I have a couple businesses, but this show is absolutely my greatest passion. Mm -hmm. What question should I, Ben Gothard, be asking you, Grant Cardone, with your experience, your yeah. wisdom, your uh -huh. knowledge, that I wouldn't think to ask? Well, dude, you should, you should be asking me, hey, man, what am I, how am I fucking up right now? Okay, because if this podcast is your biggest interest, I mean, that's where you're fucking up. There ain't no money in this podcast. Okay, you should be putting more attention on your career and on your business. And nobody's going to know you because you're a pot. You're not the next Rush Limbaugh. I can tell you that right now. Okay, those days are over. Guys making big money on radio and TV, it's gone. It's, it's not going to happen again. So... You're not, you're not going to become the next, uh, no offense, but I don't think you're going to become the next podcast superstar of the universe. Even if you did, dude, there's no freaking, there's no heaven in it. Yeah. Right? So um, I would focus on those two businesses you have. And I'd make sure the first one, what's the one that, that has the most promise? Uh, it's a merchant processing business. I'd lean into that thing so hard, dude, I'd figure out how to make a million dollars a day off that deal. That would be my advice to young Ben. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. You got it, brother. Thank you.